indications for fluorescein angiograms can be summarised as it's done to guide treatment. It's to see whether there's a leakage that needs to be either lasered or needs to be injected, to, or if there is a blockage to see whether they need to be lasered, have targeted PRP or something like that. So it's to make a decision to guide treatment. So it is done so that you change your practice. If, for example, you think that there's a membrane, but you're not going to treat it either way, that I would say, and I think most people would, that there'd be no purpose at all in doing it. And likewise, if you have a CSR, um, and you're not going to treat it at this point anyway, then I would say, what is the purpose of, of doing an angiogram in that way? Red free. A red free is a certain picture that doesn't contain any red. This is a red free picture. How can you tell whether this is a red free picture or not a fundus or to fluorescence? Yeah. Okay, so you look at the disc. Yeah. If the disc is white, white okay. this is a red free picture. A red free picture is ideal for looking at red things in the eye because it blocks them out very specifically. Blood vessels, uh, complexes of vessels as in new vessels, bleeding, hemorrhage, all these things are crisply delineated and are thus uh, a good addition to a nice fluorescein angiogram realm, particularly in diabetics. And if the disc is dark or black, mm -hmm. it is a fundus autofluorescence. So a fundus autofluorescence is a measure of the health of the RPE. Mm -hmm. If the RPE is dead, then there is no fluorescence. It is a black patch. Is there any RPE on the disc? There is not. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's dark. Sometimes the RPE is white. It is white. It is more active than usual. It contains mm -hmm. more. The job of the RPE is to recycle um, photoreceptor pigment and things. Every day, particularly in the morning, the photoreceptors dump a lot of waste products and then they process it. And they process it, the stuff is fluorescent. So the more stuff it processes, the more fluorescent it is. So if a piece of RPE is being overworked, it is white, glows on autofluorescence. There are certain other genetic disorders that can also cause uh, hyperfluorescence on autofluorescence. Stargats, yes, with uh, excessive like skin. When looking at the stages of an angiogram, you start at the beginning and work your way to the end. The first thing you do is look to see when the dye enters the eye, uh, and that is at 12 seconds it enters the arteries. Looking at the blood in the artery, the delay between the artery filling and the vein filling. If there is a delay of longer than that, that there must be excessive pressure in the venous system blocking it, such as a central retinal or a branch retinal vein occlusion, so that it takes longer for, for it to diffuse. So you essentially look for filling defects or abnormal areas of fluorescence. After you've gone through those, nice to look at the disc and the vessels around the disc as well, as well as the periphery. But focus on the abnormalities that you see as well. As I would say, introduce what it is and then go straight for the obvious abnormality before describing what isn't. Otherwise, it seems a bit strange to ignore the elephant in the room.